Greetings and salutes, everyone, and welcome to a newer setup. As you can see, we have some paper to punish because today we are doing the replica review of the A&K Mark 46. This is a full polymer version, so the feed tray, top cover, the body, uh, it's all polymer. Uh, the riz here is all metal and everything. Uh, this is your battery storage compartment. Wired to Tamiya. It's got a fuse in there so it can take LiPo style batteries. Um, this does retail for 409. I'm going to actually leave that lower cover off and I'm going to set it down. Um, $409.99, if I remember correctly. I'll plug it in down below. Um, it is wired to the front, which is unfortunate. Now the Mark 46, so internally this thing is a standard version two gearbox for a 249. So it's got the short motor and everything. Uh, I have not done anything to this. So this is still stock, as stock can be. Sorry, I keep messing with it. Um, I do have plans for it. So, uh, it comes with a bipod. I've already taken mine off because of the handguard itself. It's just uncomfortable to hold with the Riz and the Picatinny right there. Um, cause the bipod locks up underneath where your battery tray cover is. And it just grabbing the bipod underneath this just doesn't work for me. If it had the old school style 249 grip, I would get it. Now, I really, really wanted this. Uh, I asked for this out of the Isaiah's Private Collection Mystery Box um, because I used to carry one in real life um, in the Army um, in the short time that I was in. And I carried a 249 and I loved it. Uh, real comparison to real world. Uh, it is a scale one-to-one -one replica. Um, in the civilian sector, you will never get your hands on one of these really. So unless you have special licensing or you go to some sort of rain shoot or something. Um, so this is a one-to-one -one scale replica. Um, weight wise, this thing is around 12 ish to 15 pounds, considerably less than the real thing. Um, personally, I would prefer a full metal one just because uh, it's more similar to what I carried for weight wise and it'd feel more comfortable. Um, that's why I prefer full metal when it comes to all of my replicas. It's because it's closer to the real weight. Um, which is the HK416 is very, very close, like uncannily close. Um, but you'll get a review on that later. We'll talk about that. But with this being a polymer body, especially for people who aren't used to carrying it, it is a bit lighter. Um, but I, I tell you guys what, carrying an LMG around is uh, not for the faint of heart at all. Um, it is cumbersome, it is loud, it is heavy. Um, yeah, it comes with a 2,500, 2,500 ground box mag, auto winding or consistent. There's a little switch on the bottom. It is battery operated with two double A's. Ooh, excuse me. Um, and uh, yeah, so new deal. So guys, in our replica reviews before, I was just going based off of uh, what the box said for FPS. I got a chrono now. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to punish some paper, but I'm gonna give you some chrono results. And I thought I would do it a little bit different on this one. So with this review, externally, this thing is solid, even though it's polymer. Um, internally, I've heard some things about A and K. Uh, the gears aren't supposed to be the greatest and blah, 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 blah. And they'll strip out. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's if you're consistently using an 11.1 in it, because it does recommend that you use a 7.4. I have test fired this before this. So I do know I'm not blowing anything up, but if anything does happen, it is what it is. I do have eye protection on the other side. Cause you guys will not be seeing me as I'm off camera shooting. Um, so I'm going to go put on my eye protection. I'm going to plug up a, I got two different batteries here. I got a 26 milliamp 
7.4 volt uh, lithium ion, and I have a 11.1 lipo, uh, 1400 milliamp. This one's a 30C, this one is a 25C. So they're not too far apart in that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chrono both of these, and uh, we're gonna go from there. Yeah, and I'm just leaving the handguard off while I do this because, uh, yeah, it is a, it is an endeavor <laughs> to try to get that to fit back on. Let me line this back up real quick, make sure I'm not shooting outside of the target here. And here we go. some shots on there with the 7.4 so let's take a looky peek just so you guys can see I'm gonna swing around here this is our average readout joule feet per second rounds per second okay we got about 31 shots through and I have it set and we're using 0.20 gram BBs because that's the industry standard for testing our average is 418 feet per second at, ooh, I want to call that one point, yeah, 1.63 joule. That's shooting a little firm and hot there. Our rounds per second uh, looks like we're averaging around nine rounds per second. Now that's with a 7.4 battery. Um, there is a fuse in this, so we're going to plug up an 11.1 and uh, we're gonna do it again let's uh wipe this clear the data let's move the adapter over and uh any of the jump cuts or editing issues i apologize because i'm gonna kind of hop around my outtakes uh, cut that out. <laughs> okay now we plugged up the 11 one Cleared our data so we can get it real wind. All right, and I'm gonna turn on the. Where's my switch? Where's my switch? Okay, now it's going to wind by sound, which is one of the two options on here. So it'll wind when I shoot. accidentally set that to auto wind. <laughs> Whoops! So we just kept going. All right. Now, I was with an 11 one. And I'll come up and show you guys here. That is what we're looking at for our numbers. So, rounds per second with an 11 one. Looks like we're at around and we're steadily rolling. It's around 15 rounds, 15 rounds a second. Again, we're averaging the same FPS, so about 418 feet per second, about 1.63 joule. So that tells me that's running a little firm for some field limitations. I might need to put a lesser spring in there, but also some fields um, that is acceptable for LMGs because of full auto fire. I'll have to look my stuff up, but um, my overall thoughts and reviews. The thing All right, and here we're going to go over the pros and cons in our final thoughts here. So we're going to start with the cons so we can end on the good note of the pros. <clears throat> okay, con number one, battery space. Battery space in this thing is very, very limited unless... You actually pay and do the modifications to make it rear wired. Uh, it's essentially underneath the barrel, or if you can get a little tiny battery to fit in that little tiny space. Yeah, I am going to update it with a full stock so I can rear wire it and make it, you know, 
rear wired so I have battery space for days. Con number one. Con number two, it's polymer. Uh, I know it's kind of like a nitpick, but for me, um, I mean, it's a good start, but I, I prefer full metal body, especially with uh, these types of replicas, because the, the more realistic, the better. <laughs> um, the rate of fire is number three. That is really slow. Um, I will be teching it. I will be tweaking things. I got to do the motor height adjustment and all those things, you know, taking the gearbox out and doing stuff. Uh, but I will be changing out the gear set. A lot of the advertisements for this says it's really upgradable and they emphasize how upgradable it is. So I think they know this is more of a budget friendly LMG and it's something that you can definitely pour money into and make it a monster, which I am going to do. Um, and con number four is the box mag design, how it connects into um, <laughs> the magazine feed and how it locks into the bottom. It tries to unlock and slide out. I'm going to have to cut a groove into the base of the feed connection. Um, it's, it's just a very poor design. Um, the box mag becomes very wiggly because of it. And uh, I will be making adjustments. Um, if not other purchases of different box mags for it. I also um, like the aesthetic of the 2500 round and how it looks to a 200 round box mag, um, but I think they should be putting in, especially with the Mark 46, the smaller 1500 rounds, because one, they would carry more of the 1500 rounds in a Mark 46 package, and it just makes more sense in my mind. Also, lessens the weight just a little bit more. <laughs> Um, pros, it's a one-to-one -one scale replica of a Mark 46, which is the SF's answer to trimming down a 249, making it a little bit more carryable. They removed the carry handle, they shortened the barrel, they added the riz rail, and they have the collapsible stock. Um, so it, it is phenomenal. Um, <laughs> Pro number two, it's an LMG. LMGs are awesome, great fun, and I love full auto fire. Um, pro number three, now this is gonna be kind of contradictory. Three, it comes with a 2500 round box mag. It's auto winding or sound activated. Um, as the design flaws go with it, that box mag is still also an awesome addition to come with it. Um, so you don't have to spend extra money out the gate or have to f stick in M4 magazines and just torch through those things like crazy. Um, but yeah. And pro number four, uh, it is fully upgradable. It has the standard 249 gearbox in it. So you can do all the things that you want to do to it. Um, I do have plans on making it brushless. Like I said, I'm going to turn it into a monster. Probably going to put like 13 to 1 gears in it. I don't know. I'm still shopping around for it. I got other guns to check out first. So, uh, guys, thanks for watching the review comparison of battery test fire of uh, Mr. Torg, my uh, ANK Mark 46. Thank you again to Isaiah and Airsoft GI for that beautiful mystery box that I got from you guys that you were able to hook me up with this. It seriously means the world to me to have this LMG, this 249 in in my collection it, it seriously means the world to me it is a dream pew of mine to have in my collection because i used to carry one in the army and i miss it dearly so now i got one and again isaiah thank you but guys there's more to be coming i will be doing teching videos when i get around to it on that and uh besides that keep the subscriber count climbing we're uh you know super close to that 350 so let's get there so we can snap into a shemag and I can do that giveaway, you know, with all that fun stuff. And, uh, yeah. Until next time, guys. Never, ever forget your battle cry. Nee!